Uh, for more, we're pleased to welcome in Matt Barnes, who was uh, Kobe's friend and teammate for two seasons with the Lakers. Um, there are so many um, memories. And that piece reminds me a lot of just how great he was and what he meant to people. You know Kobe in a very different way. If you could tell me a little bit about what he did for your boys, because uh, is, we know that he's that guy. This is hard, this one is hard. Um, we, came, we came together on different circumstances. Obviously the ball fake in Orlando. Um, you know, a, a potential fight turned into a, a friendship and a brotherhood. And, um, you know, he was the first person to call me free agency in 2010. And uh, asked if I wanted to be a Laker. And I mean, I said, hell yeah, I've been a Laker fan my whole life. Um, so from there, it wasn't so much about Kobe on the court. It was what we developed off the court. We were go both going through some personal stuff at the time. and. <laughs> We hung out a lot and we talked a lot about kids, about life, about what's next. And um, he was just always so enamored with my twins. Um, I would always have him around and he would go out of his way to hug him, talk to him, give him shoes. I think the first pair of shoes he gave him when they were like three years old and oh, they, didn't want, they didn't want to take those things off. Um, you know, this is a, uh, I surprised the boys for their 10th birthday. Uh, we drove out to Orange County and Kobe gave him a private workout and, and, and beat him down. I had one of them crying. You know, <laughs> that, that, that's how Kobe he was. He was relentless no on the kids it too? Was no slack. Oh you know my gosh. I mean? He gave, they had to run 17s at the end and the first one to finish got to stop and Isaiah lost and Isaiah kept losing. So he, Kobe gave Carter, his brother, a chance to make a left-handed shot to um, erase the rest of Isaiah's running. And Carter made it, and uh, he went and hugged his brother, and then Kobe went and hugged both of them, and it was just like, this is this dude's unbelievable. Amazing, yeah. Unbelievable. He, everyone has that story where they've had these moments with Kobe, these special moments, because of how um, we are now remembering him. It's interesting, my co-anchor David wanted me to ask you, because you mentioned it, Let's go back to the, the, the flinch, because there was a time, especially in L.A., you couldn't, you couldn't come to L.A. That, no. that infamous, no. that fake where we thought no. you were going to try to hit Kobe yeah. and you didn't flinch. Yeah. We, we didn't like you, Matt. We didn't yeah. want you here, and we didn't like you. So it's no. interesting to know that Kobe actually called you the following season and said, come play. Well, it, you know, we talked about it on my podcast, which was, you know, people were saying I think that was his last um, interview. And he said that's what made him want me to play with him. You know, he said anyone crazy enough to F of me is crazy enough to play with me. And I think that's when kind of I earned his respect. And, you know, for him to personally call me, it wasn't like we were, we were cool, but it wasn't like we were tight at that point. And for him to track my number down and, and tell me to come be a Laker, I mean, it was a, it was a tremendous honor. But um, like I said, outside the basketball player, just the father, you know what I mean? The, the way I, we would go back and forth, you know, I, he had his two girls, I had my twins. And then they got pregnant, pregnant with Bianca and I gave him a hard time and he's just like, you know, we're going to keep trying. And then <laughs> when they got pregnant with Capri, I had Ashton on the way. So I was having my third boy. He was having his fourth girl and I sent him a text. He was mad at you. He, in, in big capital letters, he said, God has a sixth sense of humor <laughs> with the heart next to it. You know what I mean? But uh, Gigi was his road dog, and he was so proud. You know, when he's very passionate and when he speaks about something he's passionate about, his tone change, his mm -hmm. mannerisms change. And when he spoke about Gigi is, is holding this legacy down like he really meant it. And, um, you know, for both of them to, 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 to go down unexpectedly is really hard. It's really hard. I appreciate you um, sharing that story with us. Yeah, I mean, in the city of angels, he's the biggest angel. In the city of stars, he's the biggest star. So he and Gigi will definitely be missed. And condolences to the Bryant family and, and Vanessa and the rest of the girls. And the seven others that were lost also in that else. helicopter crash. Matt Barnes, former teammate of Kobe Bryant sharing that story with us. David, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, guys. I could have listened to that conversation for a long time. Matt Barnes sharing some of his inner thoughts about his friend Kobe Bryant as you see the memorial there in downtown Los Angeles outside Staples Center for Kobe Bryant, who died two days ago.